The Walt Disney Company recently lost about a trillion dollars over the forthcoming century by taking on the state of Florida, moderates and conservatives, and losing badly. But it's not just pressure from the right that is facing the Walt Disney Company. No, now we are watching as the left faces off against Bob Iger, letting him know that they have scratched his back, and by gosh, by darn, he better scratch theirs right back. Folks, we'll explain to you why Disney now faces major challenges from congressional Democrats. We'll tell you about it right now. Hello folks, welcome back to the Pro Channel where we do not often get political, political, but today we're going to have to do so because that is where the entertainment news is. So apologies, but we go there forthrightly and as honestly as we can because we explain entertainment and we keep you ahead of the culture curve. As we do so, click that like button if you like content like this. Now Disney has faced serious scrutiny over their handling of politics in the past, and yes, they did just lose in Florida dramatically after facing off against Governor Ron DeSantis. Disney now facing a trillion dollar price tag over the next century because they chose to get involved into issues of children's state curriculum taught in schools regarding bedroom issues. Boy, oh boy, what a terrible idea that was. But it is paying off from the left. And well, what is California? California is definitely a blue state and Disney is not feeling the blues there, Anaheim has indeed approved a $2 billion Disneyland Forward expansion, which largely benefits Disney without really having a tremendous amount of money tossed into Disneyland. Disneyland Forward has great uh, pieces of art, has great concepts, but we know how that goes. And $2 billion, potentially over the next decade, well, that doesn't add up to very much with the way that Disney spends. So, in some ways, Disney has gained with the left, and certainly the push from uh, Gavin Newsom, governor of California, helped. And so that's an indication of what Disney gets from the left versus the right. All of that said, folks, the reason you clicked here is because Disney is now taking it on the chin from Congress, and not from Republicans, but from Democrats. Take a look at this. Disney, Warner Brothers Discovery, and Fox grilled by U.S. representatives on sports streaming joint venture. It says it's anti-competitive, or at least that's the concern. Representatives Jerry Nadler and Joaquin Castro have 19 questions on how the new offering affects access, competition, and choice in the sports streaming market. Now, why does this matter? We'll take a look at who the two are. Jerry Nadler and Joaquin Castro. Folks, these two gentlemen are not anywhere close to the middle. These are not moderate Democrats. These are two guys who come from not only, uh, well, connected to uh, Nancy Pelosi Democrats, but they are far left Democrats indeed. Take a look at what they're wanting to know. This gives you some indication of what Disney is facing from the left. Disney, Fox, and Warner Brothers Discovery's sports streaming joint venture has captured the attention of Congress. This is by Lucas Manfredi, and it's out of therap.com. As programmers, your companies exert tremendous influence overpricing across the live sports TV ecosystem. House Judiciary Committee ranking member, Representative Jerry Nadler of New York and Representative Joaquin Castro of Texas wrote in a letter addressed to Bob Iger, David Zaslov, and Lachlan Murdoch. Now, folks also remember, these two individuals probably have very little care about the sports ecosystem. Oh, give me a break. We, we are at the precipice of World War III. We are at the edge of... Uh, Tremendous economic issues. We are seeing politicization at levels we have not seen in 150 years. And these two care about sports ecosystems? No, I dare say they do not. So what is this about? We'll explain in a moment. It says, as a result, the joint venture raises questions about how this new offering would affect access, competition, and choice in the sports streaming market. Without more complete information about the pricing, intent, and organization of this new venture, we are concerned that this consolidation will result in higher prices for consumers and less fair licensing terms for upstream sports leagues and downstream video distributors. Folks, let me say this as well. We have always worried for Disney that doing this was going to draw the ire of regulators, right? That this was going to have difficulty passing by the smell test 
of so many of those out there whose job it is to make sure that companies don't cross the line into monopolistic kinds of ventures. That said, is Jerry Nadler or is Joaquin Castro, are either of these individuals part of those sorts of uh, institutions, organizations? No. Nadler is the, the head of the Judiciary Committee. He had, uh, why would he care about this? Folks, it's politics because these are politicians. Take a look at these questions. What are the relevant markets impacted by the joint venture? That's fine. How many subscribers is the joint venture projected to have within one, three, and five years of launch? Why would they want to know that? That's a, that's a business statistic. Will the joint venture distribute channels of non-joint venture partners? Okay, if you're wanting to find out if it's monopolistic, that's one possible question. How will the joint venture partners determine the pricing of their own sports channels included in the joint venture? Okay. How do those prices compare? You get the idea. Um, here's, here's some interesting stuff. When will the pricing of the joint venture be determined and announced? Again, that's trying to get uh, business strategies out into the open. Why would they want to do that? Why would they need to do that? And, and you can see some of these other questions. This is extensive questioning. And much of it is not at all related to anything that these gentlemen need to know. Um, just, just letting you know that. So what's going on here? Well, folks, it's all about leverage. And in this business, in the business of corporations that are highly and intricately connected with politics now, it's all about leverage. And the DNC and the Democrat Party and these, these uh, government representatives, they need some leverage on Disney. See, Bob Iger, he, he managed to survive that proxy battle so far. But he might need their help again, especially if Nelson Peltz is going to come back. And, well, we've got a video on that tomorrow, and it's a big one. So what are you to do if you're on the left and you just gave a big favor to Bob Iger and helped him out? What are you to do? Well, you need to keep him on a leash. Now, I want you to see exactly what Bob Iger was saying about this not too long ago. And let's see how that compares to now this, where he is facing headwinds from the party, which he is very closely associated, even having considered in the past running for president as a Democrat. Here we go. You keep bringing up ESPN flagship, and I do wonder, and again, I know you're not going to talk price, but why, why have that anymore? If I, as a sports consumer, have access to this joint venture, and let's say I'm paying 45 bucks, why am I going to spend another 30 on an ESPN over-the-top product? I don't quite understand the, the, pro the what. Also, folks, remember, as we always say when we do these Bob Iger interview analyses, and this out of CNBC Squawk Box, watch Bob Iger's body language. Doesn't look like a happy man answering this question. But that is for the Well, consumer. first of all, we haven't gotten specific about how the pricing will work. I think you have to assume that if someone is already buying the the joint venture product, right, they're that, not gonna have to that will take an in, be taken into account if someone wants to buy so-called flagship. Uh, what we're trying to do is basically serve sports fans in multiple ways. If sports fans want who are not part of current multi-channel bundles already or were and, and basically canceled their subscriptions. That's certainly one way to serve them. If they're not interested in that and they just want ESPN, and by the way, what ESPN so-called flagship service will have is will be significantly more than what the ESPN component of the joint venture will be. What's he talking about here, folks? That very controversial issue, which by the way, he's going to need politicians on his side to do, which is to bundle betting directly into ESPN, the flagship streaming application. In other words, what Disney wants, allegedly, and maybe just flat out publicly, what they seem to want is to have 18, 19, 20-year-old men watching sports, and at every age as well, but they want young men in particular watching sporting events, and then they want them to be able to bet directly through the same thing they're watching it whether it's the TV or whether it's their smartphone or their computer, whatever it is that they're watching that sporting event on through ESPN Plus, they want them to be directly able to make a bet very quickly right then and there. That's what Bob Iger is talking about. And again, remember the leverage issue. He's going to need to uh, be very good friends with a lot of politicians, a lot of bureaucrats to get that to happen because it's, well, in my opinion, it's not a very moral thing to do, 
but we'll see how that goes uh, in terms of ethics and what the government says is the uh, proper way of handling this in, in terms of legalities. But he's going to have to make friends. And I think on the left, what they're saying is, don't you go back to the middle, Bob. Don't you try to lower the noise. Don't you, don't you lower that knob. You better be buddies with us. You better take care of us. That ABC News thing over the next six months, nine months, you better take care of us, Bob. Because if you don't, this joint venture and some of this other stuff, we're looking at it. We're looking at it, Bob. If they like that, they'll be able to get that too. And what we're trying to do is serve sports fans in multiple ways and create real convenience too. Which so you don't see it as a you don't see it as a, a reason not to do an ESPN over the top flagship product as you describe it, which I think you've talked about potentially as soon as 2025 hitting the market. Correct. The existence of this JV. Do you have a name for this JV yet? No. If you've got any ideas, <laughs> yeah, please. You know, we have a, we have a suggestion box you here on the Disney box, no. <laughs> But you see them being able to exist both. Because we talk so often about when you would take ESPN eventually over the top. And I just I still do find myself wondering, well, with the existence of this product, does it make it less, uh, um, less of a need? Look, ESPN over the top, again, is going to have multiple features to it. There'll yeah. be fantasy sports. There'll be the opportunity to bet. On oh, will there ever? And why, why does there need to be, why, why do they need fantasy sports and betting directly embedded into uh, ESPN? Well, they need it because ESPN's a loser right now. It's a loser, right? It's a loser just like Disney Plus is a loser. Hulu's not a loser, but uh, you, they're paying loser prices to buy it. You know what's not a loser, though? What's not a loser is the Disney parks. The Disney parks make money. And the vast majority of the money made by Disney parks and experiences comes from first Disney World, then Disney Cruises, then Disneyland. Everything else is very, very, very far off. And those parts of Disney seem to subsidize the failures, such as ESPN, such as Disney Plus, and they are tremendous failures. So why does Bob Iger need to get betting and gambling? And why does he need to get uh, fantasy sports into ESPN Plus? And why is this JV so important? Because these have to make a profit at some point, or at least stop losing so much. And that's why the Democrats giveth and the Democrats taketh away. Bob Iger has to play ball with the left to get these things like Disneyland forward, to fend off Nelson Peltz, who basically is someone coming from the moderate right. He's got to have the support of the left to do that. And that's why, although we are harsh with Disney sometimes, and especially when they do this propagandistic kind of stuff in their children's streaming, everyone out there, in order to understand what's going on, and thus our mission, understand entertainment, you need to understand that Disney faces pressures from both sides. It's just that Disney is more aligned in one particular direction because Disney is aligned with the institutional power. And the institutional power at this point clearly lies with the left. That's not to say that that could not swing at some point. And Bob Iger is definitely aligned personally with those partisan and political views. But that does not make him independent, nor inoculated, nor invulnerable to the challenges he will face from the left should he try in the least to move Disney towards the middle. In fact, I dare say that he will not have heard the last from people like Jerry Nadler, Joaquin Castro, and others in the uh, Nancy Pelosi crowd, should he try to get Disney back to a less political positioning. Folks, that's the video today. We hope we explained why Disney does what it does just a little bit better. Of course, we would be uh, missing out a little bit if we also didn't say that Bob Iger likes his yachts, his two showers, and maybe even petting the hippo. So that has to be factored in as well. But folks, we hope we uh, explained it very well to you, made your day just a little bit better, made you a little bit brighter, smarter, wiser, although it's hard to do because you're already pretty darn intelligent. All right, folks, on your way out the door, if you would not mind, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell, and drop a comment down below and let us know your thoughts. Remember, this channel is not political, but when entertainment interfaces with the political, that's where we have to go because we will cover entertainment in all of its forms. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun. Clickbait. Fraud. Drama queen. Ugh.
I wish there was a channel that was five to six minute news reads without the drama, frauds, and clickbait that could accurately let me know the current news providing my crucial context utilizing all the different That Park Place contributors and creators. Well, stupid. <laughs> huh? There is. It's the That Park Place YouTube channel, which will be going live real soon, so make sure you're subscribed so you can really stick it to the algorithms. You're joking. Nope.